This is Twit. Of course, artificial general intelligence. We'll get to that a little bit later. We can we can get to the the scary stories that have been developed about what that might lead to, but there is a bit more fact based concerns. I won't even call them fears. I'll call them concerns about what narrow AI might actually do. And this this is more pragmatic. These are people who are seeing what automation is doing, and they're saying, "Wait a minute, are." Are we getting to a point where we're going to make humans obsolete? Are we getting to a point where I'm designing robots and narrow AIs that will take my job? What would you want to say to the, those people? Well, in the book, I cover all three of those viewpoints. The viewpoint that that is exactly what will happen. And then the viewpoint that, no, it will take every job. It'll be write better poetry and be a better president and, and act better in movies, everything. And then the view that, no, that's... Um, all preposterous. Uh, I will say that you may have heard uh, a study that gets thrown around a lot, an Oxford study, a fine study that says 47% of jobs are going to be replaced by automation, or at least that's how it's reported. The interesting thing is that the, the writers of the study go out of their way to say, um, we're not saying that at all. What we're saying is 47% of the things that people do in their jobs may be automated. And that's not particularly news, right? If you look back 20 years, probably 47% of things that people did in their office job has been automated. I mean, that's not particularly news. If you look, though, at there's an OECD study that nonpartisan, multinational, that, that said what entire jobs can be replaced by machines, then um, they came up with uh, the number 9%. I have a robot job test on um, my website, uh, byronreese.com, and, um, and it asks you 10 questions about a job, and you can answer, you know, how much mobility does it require, how much empathy, and all of that. You can answer it. And we find virtually no jobs are where the entire job is going to be replaced by automation. And, 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 and there's a big misconception also about how that works, and it goes like this. Um, you know, imagine, imagine a series of jobs from really high skilled ones up here all the way down to just like, um, you know, an, an order taker at a fast food place, a low skilled job. And here's what people say. They say automation's really good at creating awesome new high end jobs, like a geneticist. And what it does is it destroys all these low skilled jobs like order taker at a restaurant. And then here's the part I think is where the shell game part happens. They say, do you really think that person who was an order taker at a restaurant is going to become a geneticist? Right. And the answer to that is no, not at all. That isn't how it works. What happens is a college professor becomes a geneticist. The high school teacher gets the, goes and works for the college. The substitute teacher gets hired on full time all the way down. So the question isn't, can that order taker become a geneticist? The question is, this is the important part, can everybody do a job just a little harder than the job they're doing today? If the answer to that is yes, which I believe is true, then every time technology creates a job at the high end, everybody gets a promotion. Everybody goes up a notch. And so for 250 years, this is exactly what has happened. For 250 years in this country, we have had full employment, other than the depression and we've had rising wages and the way that that's happened for 250 years is automation and technology creates great new jobs destroys really bad jobs and everybody goes up a notch and that is uh there's no reason in the world to think that that is not going to continue to happen that way for the next 250 years um this idea somehow that when when you think of what a person can do and you take something like a waiter who, who um, you know, has to go and take an order and then they have to answer questions and then they have to clean up baby spit up and, and clean up a mix of fallen drink and then give somebody the Heimlich. Like, I don't know. I mean, there's this like incredible range of things that humans can do. And robots can't. I mean, they simply cannot. They, they, they are, 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 are tolerably good at repetitive motion that that never changes. And other than that, the humans, humans hands down 
there's not a robot that can that can duplicate what a three-year-old can do, let alone what an adult can do. And so I think what happens is these studies come out, and then it it it, it sells, it gets clicks when they say Oxford says forty-seven percent of jobs will be lost to automation. Well, fear and then sells. It, fear always it, sells. It 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 scares people, and. And I'm I'm at a point where I think it's deliberate, not in any conspiratorial sense, but but and then and you just do that enough and enough and enough, and it, people lose confidence, and they I think they kind of lose the the big picture that this is good for everybody. All these great new jobs mean we all get to go up a notch, and and we all get a raise and we all get a promotion. Why? Because technology get, makes us more productive, and the way that ra- wages rise is through increasing productivity. We don't, we don't, we don't make more money because we work twice as many hours. We do it uh, compared to a hundred years ago. We do it because our work is twice as productive. And that's, and and if 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 automation is the villain, then then assembly lines are bad, and nail guns are bad, and um, if if automation is the villain, then you you want to make everybody kind of work with their hands like frozen in ice water so they work much slower and then you need more people <laughs> and you need to outlaw machines you need to outlaw tractors and and all of that and and you'll create an enormous number of jobs and the standard of living will plummet because everybody's productivity goes down um so to vilify automation is to to, to turn your back on 250 years of, of history now people will hear that and they will say this time is different this time is different. They'll either say it's happening much faster now. That's kind of one tack. Or they'll say um, it's going after the thinking jobs and not just the physical jobs. And interestingly, the idea that this time is different uh, also was common in the 60s and common in the 30s right. and common at the beginning. Um, but I, I think each of those two arguments that it's faster now or that um, it's going after a different kind of work. I think they're both spurious as well. That being said, I give them a full airing, and I uh, in in the book. I mean, I want I want the reader to take their answers to those three questions and kind of work through it. And if if in the end you believe people are machines, then maybe someday we'll build a mechanical person. And if we ever can build a mechanical person, then maybe that mechanical person will be will be better. Uh, than an organic person. But if you don't believe people are machines, then uh, that there is something substantially different between a human being and a machine, then the machines are never going to be able to do what we do.